Hello, and welcome to another Passive Life video. In this video, I wanted to compare the business strategies of Aptera and two other recent startups, Canoe and Expos, and discuss why I think so far at least, Aptera is coming out on top. All startups face essentially two major problems. The first is attracting customers, that's the easy part, and the second is delivering the products that are promised. To overcome the first problem, startups have to stand out. In order to attract some strong media attention, startups often go all out and make incredible promises on products with theoretical budgets and overly optimistic timeframes. We see this time and again on crowdfunding projects. The second problem is then delivering what was promised. The more complicated the product, the bigger the problem will be. In the case of EVs, which are both complex and expensive, the main problem is always going to be funding. We are talking about tens or even hundreds of millions in startup capital, not to mention a long list of passionate experts in engineering, design, marketing and finance, to mention but a few. The first company I want to take a closer look at is Canoe, which was founded by people from Faraday Future, and it seems already to be on the verge of collapse unless it can find a last minute financial bailout to help it reach production. Its launch concept was groundbreaking and took full advantage of EV design flexibility, creating a flexible, modular skateboard format with designs ranging from the exquisite living room spaces to highly functional workspaces. Canoe also promoted the concept of never actually owning the vehicle. Instead, it was intended to be rented on a daily or monthly basis. The strategy was interesting to say the least, but very divisive. So what went wrong with Canoe? To put it simply, they seem to have bitten off more than they can chew. In order to fund their project, they decided to merge with Tennessee Capital Acquisition, which in turn led them to going public with an IPO in December 2020. A lot of money was raised, but at the very serious cost of losing control of the company. Shortly after the IPO, the co-founder left, then the CFO left, then the head of the powertrain development left, and the remaining founder stepped down. In fact, anyone with any emotional connection in the company seems to have abandoned ship, most likely because they no longer had control and did not like the changes that were being forced through. IPOs are powerful tools to create a massive influx of capital, solving one major problem, but creating another as you are essentially selling control of the company. This increases the risk that the company will deviate from the original concept. The new shareholders, especially ones who buy into high-risk startups, are not looking to make dreams come true or legacies. They are only looking to make money. As it stands, Canoe has a serious cash flow problem and will most likely collapse before the end of the year. The next company I want to compare is Xbus. For those of you who haven't seen the Xbus concept yet, it's a bit like Canoe except smaller, less sleek, and on drugs. As much as I love the concept, I also have some major issues with it. Or more precisely, I have a problem with the leadership and the recent decisions they seem to have made. The original concept, similar to Canoe, was great. A highly modular vehicle chassis that could be ordered in any number of configurations and modified easily by the owners. It came with solar panels as standard and small 1.25 kilowatt hour battery modules that could be swapped between vehicles quickly, allowing for up to 600 kilometers of range. This small battery concept had many potential advantages. For example, if you had two vehicles with 200 kilometer range, you could move all batteries from one to the other for longer trips. If one battery breaks, the car still runs, and replacing one module will only cost a couple of hundred dollars instead of tens of thousands of dollars for the entire battery set. You could also start with a much cheaper, smaller range model and slowly build up the range over time. You could also lend batteries to friends or family. You could even leave batteries at home to charge using your own solar power, a major bonus for people who live off grid or on farms that need to keep vehicles working without a major break. In total, there were 18 planned variants. The most popular ridge was the Mini Camper. From the outside, it looks kind of cute, and the inside looks, well, unfortunately, a bit like an 80s Vauxhall Astra, but that aside, the concept was very strong. In-wheel motors promised great efficiency, reliability, and excellent maneuverability. The super-efficient solar panels promised off-grid independence and extended range. The 11 and 22 kilowatt charging was perfect for home use, and the modular body offered great adaptability. As with all EV startups, however, Xbus also faced the daunting task of bringing the promised concept to market and raising the funds to do it. Xbus sensibly chose to crowdfund their project and in this way, control of the concept was not lost, unlike with Canoe. But Xbus still lacked the necessary knowledge of the automobile industry. To solve this, they employed an ex-Daimler executive, Ulrich Walker. Although Walker has over 30 years experience in the automobile industry, I still find his appointment slightly worrying. I'm sure he's a really nice guy with some valuable knowledge, 
but is he really the right man to lead a cutting edge EV company? His most recent experience was with the Borgward brand revival in China. Borgward was a popular German automobile brand in Europe during the 50s but went bankrupt in 1961. The brand was recently revived by large Chinese investors that were indirectly backed by the Chinese government in 2010, but the official headquarters were still based in Germany. Despite serious financial and infrastructure backing, the new Borgward company released only one ICE SUV called the BX7, which was so underwhelming it reportedly sold only nine units in Germany in 2019, one of its main target markets. According to a review by Automotor and Sport in Germany, the quality of the BX7 was very good, but there was just no innovation, making it very uninteresting. Not surprisingly, the company went bankrupt in April 2022, having never posted a profit. As far as I can tell, this was the first time that Walker was flying solo, i.e. the first time he was not taking over an already well-established company, and it didn't go well, despite all the advantages he was given. Again, this does not automatically mean he will do a bad job, but after Ulrich Walker joined, suddenly there seemed to be dramatic changes of concept. The in-wheel motors are gone, replaced by a heavy and traditional ICE axle system, which will seriously impact the range and efficiency. The small batteries are gone. The batteries are now 12 times larger, destroying the handheld, easily swappable concept. The solar is now half as powerful, making it far less effective, and yet they still claim a 200 km range per day from the solar, which is a dubious claim to say the least. And lastly, the flexible do-it-yourself upgrade concept seems to have gone a little bit quiet. And here lies the crux of the problem. How do you grow a company based on a totally new concept with the limited funding and limited experience? All new EV startups find themselves in a similar position. Aptera, having burnt their fingers in the past, are carefully retaining control of their original design. Their vision remains laser focused and they are not straying from the original concept, which still remains crystal clear. Electric Brands, which owns Xbus on the other hand, has no prior experience in losing design control and they were probably feeling out of depth so they actively sought out people to take over some of the decision making, eventually employing execs from the ICE industry, who in turn seem to have started to water down the original concept and so far, in my opinion, none of the changes have been good. Almost like a breath of fresh air, this brings us back to Aptera. Aptera has also faced a few minor problems since its relaunch, but these problems are mainly centered around the regulations and classifications of three-wheel vehicles in different countries. The mandatory inclusion of reflective material, i.e. mirrors, being the biggest change that they were forced to make in the US. But in contrast to the other two startups, Aptera has so far actually gone in the opposite direction. Instead of watering down the concept, they have found ways to make it even better. Thanks to further improvements in technology, the battery energy density is better than expected, with the batteries so far receiving additional capacity at no extra cost to the owners. The solar panels have been upgraded with additional cells, hopefully providing even more power. The form of the body has been further refined, using artificial intelligence to make the body even more aerodynamic, and judging by the engineer's excitement over the custom-built Alafi motors, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another increase in efficiency there as well. There is still a long way to go, but so far, Aptera has delivered on everything it has promised, and I see no reason to believe it will not produce an incredible launch vehicle. I think in the end, the different paths these three companies took all carried their own benefits and risks. The fundamental difference between the approaches is the balance between how much money they want to raise and how much control they want to retain. Canoe gave up a lot of control for an enormous influx of cash and will probably fail. Their concept did not change much, but their management made one major mistake. They expanded too quickly. Their business model was based on mass production of an expensive vehicle, and they needed to achieve serious economies of scale to make their model work. Xbus willingly gave up some control. As a result, its concept was weakened. It has some bizarre mix of cutting edge and old fashioned. The modular concept is as modern as it gets, and it is leading the way in how EVs will be made in the future. It is a concept for the next century, but there are parts of the drivetrain that literally come from the previous century. Like mixing an ICE with a steam engine, it just makes no sense. But crucially, unlike Canoe, it should survive. Aptera, by comparison, has so far managed to retain almost all design control by only issuing Class B shares to raise funds and refraining from going public before production, which was a brilliant tactic and something that Canoe should also have done. They raise enough funds to reach production and they do not expand too quickly so their costs stay at a manageable level. And most importantly, they have not only retained design control, they have managed to improve their product, making it more aerodynamic, more powerful and more efficient. Of the recent EV startup companies, Aptera seem to be the ones 
leading the way in terms of delivering what they promised. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you are looking to purchase an Aptera, please use the link below. It'll give you $30 off the reservation fee, which is totally refundable. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.